Let's get ready to mortgage. He is the prince of programs, guru of guidelines, master of matrixes. He puts the fun in funding. Please welcome Mark, Mr. Mortgage, I tell. All right, guys, my name is Mark Itell, and this is the Mr. Mortgage Show. And man, you have landed on the right show on the right day. I am super motivated, highly caffeinated, public school educated, and super, super excited to be with you today. That reminded me of that, uh, what was that song in the movie Grease, Grease Lightning? I'm highly caffeinated, super motivated, somewhat educated, a grease lightning. Anyway, guys, Mark Itell here. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show. You're in the right place if you want the data, the tips, the tricks, the strategies, all the info that you need so you can make better real estate and mortgage decisions for you and your family. Guys, we do this each week, and I am joined, as always, by my lovely producer, Jen, who is standing by womaning the Anytime Hotline. She'll get your questions on the air. If you've got questions or comments, call or text 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292, affectionately known as the Anytime Hotline. If you prefer to shoot her an email, just head over to MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page, click that email icon, and you can shoot her your questions. That way, she'll read them on the air for you. Listen, a lot of big news was released this week, and we're going to cover it all. A lot of it is inconsequential to our to our day-to-day decisions. It's, it's interesting. I got into a conversation with somebody who's watching the CPI number, and he's watching all of the pontificating talking heads trying to make a big real estate decision. Well, he's been doing this for two and a half years, convinced the market's going to crash and rates are going to come back down. Well, guys, it's just not happening. And I had a thought when I was listening to him talk, and he's a dear friend of mine. I love the guy, but he'll trip over his own overthinking in every aspect of life. He's the guy on the golf course that will agonize over a club selection. He's got a, you know, a five iron shot over the lake to lay up for a pitch and putt for a birdie. Well, actually, that's not true. He's never putting for birdie, but he'll grab the grass and hold the grass up and drop the blades of grass to try to gauge the wind strength and the wind direction. He's going to lick his thumb and do all of that. He's going to pick up his three wood and then put it back down and grab his six iron and then grab his five iron. And finally, finally, after an agonizing length of time, he'll get up to the ball and duff it right into the water. And then he'll go take a drop and grab a nine iron and do it again. And that's what I feel like with some of these conversations I'm having about a 0.2% CPI month over month versus a 0.3. Guys, inflation is still much hotter than the Fed wants. The Fed has announced he doesn't anticipate cutting until 2025. Guys, that video is from a lecture series that he did right after the last uh, meeting where they paused. I posted that to the Facebook group. Go to MrMortgageRadio.com and click on that Facebook link and you'll see him say it for himself. So anybody who's still waiting for the Fed to signal that inflation's over and hope that rates come back down before they make a decision, you're like my buddy who's going to hit it into the water, who has been hitting it in the water for the last two years and just costing yourself because property values have indicated that they can live through a higher interest rate environment because there's just not enough supply. So guys, prices aren't coming down at the pace everybody had anticipated. They've kind of flattened in a lot of markets and they're still going up in a lot of metros and interest rates are likely going to stay in this range for a while. If you look at what's happening in China, they could stay here for a long while. But anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. What I'm super excited to share with you is we've gotten a ton of phone calls from people who want to sell their property, but they don't want to have to pay a real estate commission and then get nickel and dimed by a buyer for contributions. And they're just really trying to capitalize on saving as much of this equity for their move as they can. And a lot of people are trying to figure out how to do this for sale by owner, FSBO. You'll hear a lot of people refer to it as FISBO. So we've been working on a program and we've launched it. It's called FISBOzilla, F-S-B-O-Z-I-L-L-A.com. We wrote a book. Everything's up there. Go check out FISBOzilla, F-S-B-O-Zilla.com. 
guys, I get it. You know, I advocate for having a great agent, but a lot of people went through this market cycle and they didn't have great agents. They were advised to pay over the asking price, to pay over the appraised value, to waive their inspections, to waive their finance contingencies, to waive their appraisal contingency. And they ended up overpaying for a house that they didn't really love after they moved into it. And they found a whole host of repairs that needed to be made because the previous seller just wiped lipstick on everything. And they kind of resent that experience. And they're thinking, I need to recoup some of that when I sell. I want to do it myself. Well, guys, it's simple, but it's not easy. And what do I mean by that? Some of the simplest things are not easy to do, but they're not difficult to figure out. So we've figured it out for you. We've got all of the common pitfalls solved for you in the FizzBozilla Pro. Guys, it's free. There's nothing, there's no cost to you if you want to utilize the program. What my goal in the FizzBozilla program is to pre-qualify as many people as I can, because the number one reason for sale by owner transactions fall apart is unqualified buyers. They're unable to get a mortgage. I want to solve that problem for you. And think about it, guys. I'm not, you know, Joan of Arc or Mother Teresa or Gandhi. I get something out of this too. If I can help you sell your property, navigate through it, keep as much money in your pocket as possible. And in turn, I get to pre-qualify three families, four families. I don't know how many people are going to be interested in your home. Well, only one can buy it. Then I've met three or four other people who may need my services in the future. So I'm helping you put as much money in your pocket as possible. And I'm meeting as many people who are out there looking for properties as I can. So it's a win-win. But anyway, it's at F-S-B-O-Z-I-L-L-A, Fizbo Zilla, the commission killer. No offense to all my real estate friends out there. And guys, if you go down this path and you decide you need an agent, we're part of the Really Great Agents Network. I'm happy to refer you to somebody. But if you want to try to go it alone, I get it. You're going to save a load of money. Guys, some of you know that I like to restore old cars, old motorcycles, play with anything that runs that's old. I just, I geek out on that stuff. And I was working on the uh, Lincoln and I couldn't solve a problem. And I asked a group of guys who specialize in restoring these cars and they gave me an answer. They gave me the solution, but it was too simple. I said, that can't work. I kept looking for a more complex solution and I spent hundreds of dollars in tens of hours trying to find that solution. Well, I never did. And I asked a second time and they gave me the same answer. And I asked a third time and they gave me the same. Well, the fourth time that I asked them, they said, Mark, we're not going to answer your question anymore. We've given you the answer. Just try it. Well, guys, it was so simple. It wasn't easy. It was, you know, three hours under the car, but it was during COVID and we had nothing else to do. So it was quite fun, actually. But after that simple repair, if you will, everything worked perfectly. They solved my problem. Wasn't easy, but it was simple. And guys, man, it saved me a load of money because the only shop I could find that could work on a 60 year old car with a vacuum line diagram that looks like a spider web was six hours away. I had to ship the car to them, ship the car back and spend several thousand. I would have spent more having that simple repair done than I spent on buying the car altogether. So I get the concept of wanting to do this. And I think we've provided a solution for people who want to try it. So guys, check out fizzbozilla.com. But hey, you hear the music? You know what that means? That's my cue. We'll be back in a few. Sit tight on the other side of this very short break. We are going to dive into the Mr. Mortgage Show. So you think interest rates have gotten too high to refi? Well, not so fast. There are several reasons people refinance. Sure, lowering your interest rate is one, but there's debt consolidation, home improvement, unexpected medical expenses, pulling out some equity to go buy an investment property. Heck, I even know of one guy who refinanced his house so he could buy his mistress a condo. But let's jump back to debt consolidation for a minute. I'm working with a client right now. His name is Ben. He's going to refinance his house pay off a host of credit cards and two truck payments. And yes, his mortgage interest rate is going to go up, but his monthly expenses are going to go down significantly. And that monthly savings is going to get he and his family back on track. Guys, if you've got questions, check us out at MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. My name is Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. 
I host the Mr. Mortgage Show, and we are always here and happy to help. Check us out at MrMortgageRadio.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and this is the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you heard the man, 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292 is the Anytime Hotline, and you can call or text that number with your questions. Or head over to MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page, click that email icon, and you can send your questions to us via email. But I want to get as many questions on the air today as we can. I know we've got a couple more back there. So, uh, Jen, throw me another question. Lee wants to know, are there any no-doc loan options for a first-time buyer? This may sound crazy, but I make money selling on TikTok, so I don't have a real job. But I do make enough money to buy a house. Haley, that is a great, great question. And my God, the pandemic, I believe, has created so much opportunity for people to generate income in what we consider non-traditional or, in your case, not a real job. So I've met some fascinating people who do everything from a car rental um, program that kind of acts like Uber, where they rent their personal vehicles out. And this guy was super industrious, and I think he had about 20 cars that he had created a fleet, and he was, man, serious, serious income. And he relocated from California to Florida during the pandemic, but he kept all of those cars out there running on this app service, and he was going to do the same thing here in Florida. As a matter of fact, I'm going to shoot him an email when we get off the air because he was a fascinating guy, and I'd love to see how it worked out for him. But we were able to use his income from California in Florida for him to purchase a property because he demonstrated the ability to run that company basically on his phone. And guys, I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars of of income. It was fascinating to me. And you couple that with what you're talking about here, Lee, with the, the TikTok, TikTok shops. I can't even say that, but I'm just fascinated by the whole thing. I know a couple who sells jewelry on TikTok and they do rather well. So I'm fascinated by the whole in the whole culture. And if you're claiming that income on your tax returns, then you can qualify via a full doc program, assuming you make enough income. But if you're not claiming it and that's the challenge, then yes, there are some no income, no employment verification programs. And we talked a little bit about it last week because one of the callers was gravitating towards the landlord loan, but his intention was to buy that as a primary residence. And if you missed last week's show, I cautioned against it because that's occupancy fraud and you can get in real trouble for doing that. Uh, But yes, there are no income, no employment verification loans for a primary residence. It acts a lot like the landlord loan in the sense that we're looking at your credit score and your assets. And in the case of this primary residence program, we're not looking at any income. In the case of the landlord loan, we're looking at the income from the rental property. So fascinating world we live in. I would love to talk to you more and learn about how you're making uh, money on TikTok because I am fascinated by the subculture of online businesses that have blossomed in the world of COVID. And guys, I'm looking at loan applications with significant incomes that people probably would have laughed at five years ago if you said, I'm going to start a business doing fill in the blank. There are some people out there really uh, side hustle has turned into a real opportunity in a lot of instances. So I find it fascinating, but I appreciate the question. Your question was great. And the answer is yes, there are no employment and no income verification loan programs for a primary residence. But hey, Jen, toss me another question. Jacob emailed this. We are two weeks into the buy owner process and your office has been awesome. We're negotiating with a buyer now. I think we'll have a contract in a day or two. Just wanted to say thank you. Hey, Jacob, you are welcome, my brother. And I think I know the property that you're selling. So that was a super, super cool house. I'm excited for you. Uh, Appreciate the shout out, if you will. 
All right, Jen, toss me another question. Here's one from Dwayne. Can I buy a home with my parents? It's not a co-signer situation. It's a house we'll all be living in. I'm not sure if I'm explaining correctly. Hey, Dwayne, that's a brilliant question, my man. Multi-generational housing, I believe, is a thing that is going to come back in style. And our culture is one of the few cultures that we, you know, we push the kids out at 18. And, and I guess now at 30, <laughs> some of the kids. But uh, it's interesting. So if I'm understanding you correctly, you're all going to buy this property and everybody, the family's all going to live together. And in that instance, yes. Um, You could all qualify for it as a primary residence, benefit from the homestead uh, exemption. So, yes, you can definitely do that. You mentioned it's not a co-signer thing, but I do want to touch on that because a lot of parents are helping their children right now in one of two ways. They're either co-signing, which technically they're a non-occupying co-borrower, And they're just really trying to help their kids get started because they're fearful that they're going to miss out on the opportunity to own a home. Because in spite of all the headlines, property values are sticking even at these higher interest rates. So we're seeing that, right? We're seeing the non-occupying co-borrower or what we would call, I'm air quoting, cosign. We also see gift funds to help children close. And then the one that fascinates me the most that we, I believe we were the, one of the first people to talk about it, but there's nothing new under the sun. So I know it's not a new idea, but what I call the first home layaway program where parents are pulling some equity out of their home, either with a home equity line of credit or a refinance, they're pulling that equity out, going out and buying an investment property using the landlord loan because there's no personal income underwritten in the landlord loan, putting a tenant in that property. So the property is generating rent each month while their child is growing up and going to middle school and high school and college and whatever the scenario is, the sooner that you execute the plan, the probability of a large percentage of equity exists when your child is ready to move out on their own And then you can sell the property or there, I guess, they could sell the property to their child with a gift of equity. So we're seeing more and more interest in these creative ways to help the children get started. But to answer your question, if you all want to live together as one family, then you can certainly do that and all be on the loan, all be on the deed and make it your primary residence. I'm hoping I understood that question correctly. I know I threw a little bit extra in there, but I wanted to cover those other points. So I appreciate that question. Hey, Jen, do you have another one back there? Amanda wants to know, is it possible to finance a fixer upper? Hey, Amanda. Yes, indeed it is. Both as a primary residence and an investment property, there are a variety of loans where you can roll the repair costs in. And right now, today, that's not a bad option because the pretty houses are still selling rather quickly. The ones that need a little bit of work might be out there a little longer and you might find some opportunity in those. So brilliant question, but to answer it, yes, indeed, there are loans for properties that need some work. Now it depends on how much work and we can dig into all that if you have specifics, but to answer your question, yes, you can. So I hope that helps. Hey, Jen, do you have another question? Leo sent us an email. I've heard you mention before that we should ask the seller for a contribution instead of reducing the price. Can you explain this idea again? Hey, Leo, that's a great question. And what I was alluding to is the reduction in the monthly payment is greater, a bigger reduction if you lower the interest rate, say by a point, than if you lower the sales price, say by $10,000. So I would love to walk you through specifics, but if you're trying to save on your monthly payment, often a contribution to buy your rate down is far more significant than offering that same amount of contribution in the form of a discount, if that makes sense. So a $300,000 property, hey, Mr. Seller, will you give me a $10,000 contribution versus will you sell me the property for two ninety? dollars You'll find more movement in your payment by buying the rate down with that ten grand. So I hope that helps. But hey, guys, you hear the music? Man, oh man, where does the time go? We have raced through another week here at the Mr. Mortgage Show. Guys, thanks for spending a bit of your day with us. If you would like to connect with Jen and I during the week, 
just visit MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. All our contact information is there. Otherwise, we will be back next week right here, same time, same station. Guys, have an amazing week. Be good. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and I'm going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you know any friends, family, coworkers, or the guy in front of you at the grocery line who's talking or thinking about buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to help me spread the word, introduce them to me, to the team. You can do that by simply sharing MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Guys, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Now, back to the commercials. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show, and we are driven by your questions and comments. So keep them coming. Man, great questions so far, and I know Jen has some more over there, but... Guys, we always, always have room for more questions. So call or text 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. That is the Anytime Hotline. Jen will get your questions on the air. If you prefer to shoot us an email, check out MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page, click that email icon, and you can shoot her your questions that way. And guys, we try to move fast and get to everybody's questions. And if you feel like something was missed or you didn't get all of it or we sparked additional questions... Check out Mr. Mortgage Radio. Guys, there's links to all the data that we reference, all of the resources, and our contact info is there. So if you need us when we're not on the air, MrMortgageRadio.com is where you want to go to find us. But hey, let's keep it rolling. Jen, throw me another question. Eric sent this in. I know you mentioned this on your podcast, but I can't find it. I'm getting divorced. It's not final, but I want to buy a new home for my wife. Isn't there a form we can sign that keeps the new house out of the divorce? Hey, Eric. Thank you, brother, for listening to the podcast, which you can find at MrMortgageRadio.com. Shameless plug, but I appreciate that, my man. Um, Yes, there is a form. You're going to have to go through the attorneys, though. And basically, it's you said you're buying your wife the house. So you are giving up your claim to that as part of the the marital settlement. You're taking that asset outside of the settlement. So it's usually a single page. Sometimes it's two, depending on the attorney who drafted it, whether they charge you by the word or not. But yes, that's going to need to be part of the entire process. The, the lender is going to need to see that. Everybody's going to need to see that document so that you can't come back later and and lay claim to a portion of that as a marital asset. So yes, sir, you can do it. I would consult your attorney. I don't know what the form is called, waiver of, I don't remember. It doesn't come up that often, but when it does, it's a pretty simple solution. So I hope that helps. And thank you again for checking out the podcast. Hey, Jen, toss me another question. Randy sent us this one. We're seriously considering a reverse mortgage. My neighbor is telling me it's a scam and my kids will inherit a bunch of debt. He also says I can lose my Medicare. Is this true? Hey, that was Randy. Hey, Randy. Great, great, great question. Triple great question of the day. Um, So there are so, so many misconceptions around the reverse mortgage. And in addition to this whole buy owner thing, and assumable mortgages, the interest in reverse mortgages has jumped quite a bit lately because of the inflation, the cost of living, and the fixed income senior just having a difficult time keeping up. So I greatly appreciate this question because I I know it applies to far, far more people than just you. So I appreciate getting a chance to talk about this on the air. So as far as your kids inheriting a bunch of debt, they're going to have to pay off the loan, right? Right. It's like any other loan. If you have a mortgage on your property and you die, the kids are going to have to pay that mortgage off or sell the property and pay that mortgage off to settle the estate. It's it's a lien on the property. And that's all this is. Um, The difference is this balance grows. A traditional balance goes down, but your obligation to pay it doesn't change. So 
in that aspect, yes, the kids are going to have to deal with the debt, but it's no different than the debt of a forward mortgage, if you will, on a property. And if the property doesn't cover the debt, if for some reason you owe more than it's worth, there's no obligation for them to repay it. They slide the keys across the desk to the bank and the bank deals with it. It's a federally insured loan program that's non-recourse to the heirs or to the borrower if it goes upside down. So that's a misconception. The other thing, as far as Medicare, Medicare and Medicaid are two hugely different things. And Medicaid may be affected by the reverse mortgage because it's based on your eligibility is based on your financial circumstances. And while the proceeds from the reverse mortgage aren't treated as income from a tax standpoint, it may affect social programs like Medicaid, but that's very different than Medicare. Your Medicare should not be affected by the reverse mortgage. But I say that encouraging you to reach out to your financial planner. And if you don't have one, shoot me an email and I'll shoot you the AARP resources because they've got counselors you can talk with. But huge misconceptions around the program in general. And those are two of them. So I appreciate you bringing those up. Hey, Jen, throw me another question. Claire is asking, a couple weeks ago, you talked about a landlord loan that had an interest only option. Can you explain how this works and if it's a good idea? Hey, Claire, thanks for that. I think I talked about that a little earlier in the show today, too. Um, So, yes, the interest only option on the landlord loan is that it's interest only for the first 10 years. So whatever interest rate that you close at, it stays that interest rate for 40 years. The first 10 years are interest only. And then the first payment of the 11th year starts the 30-year fixed rate amortization schedule. So the payment goes up, but the rate doesn't. The payment goes up because you're now paying principal and interest. So in relation to the second part of that question, is it a good idea? It's a good idea if you're trying to maximize cash flow and you're not concerned with principal reduction because you're just paying interest. Now, That's not to say you couldn't prepay principal if you wanted to, but from the standpoint of the maximum cash flow generated each month, it's something a lot of investors like because a lot of times their strategy doesn't hold the property longer than 10 years anyway. So they're trying to maximize the cash flow. So from that standpoint, a lot of the investors prefer that side of the program. And then knowing that if they do hold the property in year 11, it just becomes a 30 year fixed rate loan. So I hope that answers the question. That's a brilliant question. So I'm, you know, kudos to you for reading between the lines because the rate doesn't increase, but the payment does because now suddenly it's principal and interest versus interest only. And guys, if you want to calculate what an interest only payment looks like, it's super simple. Take the loan amount times the interest rate divided by 12. And that's the calculation for an interest only mortgage payment. And then you can see if there's a benefit for the cash flow. And if you want to do the 30 year amortized calculation, go to Mr. Mortgage Radio and click on that mortgage calculator link. And you could play and plug all kinds of numbers in there and see what the payment's going to adjust to. And then look at the difference, what it would be interest only for 10 years versus a 30 year fully amortized fixed rate from the beginning and see if it makes sense for you. But brilliant, brilliant question. I certainly appreciate it. And guys, we talked about a strategy where people were extracting equity out of their current home because there's so much of it now and buying a property and renting it out so they had a home for their child later in life and they hold that property for 10 or 15 years and then sell it to their kids with a gift of equity. Otherwise, the kids are stuck in the, the basement eating Hot Pockets for the rest of their lives because, man, the next generation's gonna have a hard time qualifying for a property. So there are folks out there that are utilizing that strategy too. So I wanted to throw that out there, but Guys, you hear the music. You know what that means. That's my cue. We'll be back in a few. Sit tight on the other side of this short break. We'll be back with more of the show. 
Have you recently gotten a mortgage approval and now you're wondering, how do you know if it's a good deal? I mean, the wrong decision can cost tens of thousands of dollars in fees and interest rate. Is any of this negotiable? Is this a good rate? Guys, it's Mark Itel, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and we are happy at no cost or obligation to you to take a look at that fee sheet for you. We'll go line by line through it and one of three things will happen. One, we may congratulate you on getting an awesome deal and then you can exhale and move forward knowing you did great. Or two, we may be able to point out some places in that fee sheet that you can go back and renegotiate a better deal with your current lender. Or three, and guys, this one's my favorite, we may be able to offer you even a better deal, saving you in fees or interest rate or both. Guys, there's no obligation. Just go to MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Click on that fee sheet review icon and we'll do the rest. It's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show. Guys, if you have questions or comments, just call or text 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. Or head on over to MrMortgageRadio.com, scroll to the bottom of the page, click the email icon, and you can shoot your questions over that way. MrMortgageRadio.com. But speaking of you and your questions, I know Jen's got a few more back there. So Jen, let's keep this rolling. I'm ready. Tammy has a question. I'm selling my mom's condo by owner. You were just talking about a FISBO program. I'm getting jerked around by people who can't even get a mortgage. <laughs> How can I get more info about this program? Hey, Tammy. Great, great question. F-S-B-O-Z-I-L-L-A dot com. Oh, I'm going to write a song, right? Remember that song? S-A-T-U-R-D-A-Y. Nights. <laughs> uh, let me try that. F-S-B-O-Z-I-L-L-A. I guess I'm not ready to sing the URL yet, but F-S-B-O-Z-I-L-L-A, FISBOZILLA.com is where you find more info. And Tammy, this is what I'm talking about. The number one reason for sale by owner transactions never get over the finish line is unqualified buyers. And it's not your fault. You don't know what questions to ask. You don't know what forms to review. A lot of individuals don't want to give the seller the documentation needed to verify that they're approved. I totally, totally get it. There's so many nuances around the financing piece, right? When does this, when does the buyer's deposit become non-refundable? These are all things as a for sale by owner wrapped around the financing that you need to be aware of. What happens if it doesn't appraise? What happens if the home inspection shows a bunch of problems? So check out FSBOZILLA, not Zillow, FSBOZILLA, like Godzilla, Dot com and get your copy of the book. And then let's have a conversation if there's anything of interest or if it sparks another question. But I appreciate it. Let's keep it rolling. Jen, what do you have? Elaine just sent this. I tried the buy owner route a few months ago and all I got were calls from realtors wanting to list my house. I ended up taking it off the market for the season. I'm ready to put it back on, but wonder how to avoid all the realtor calls. Any advice? <laughs> wow. We have kicked an amp pile with this one, right? Gosh, I had no idea how many people were so passionate about this topic. Yes, it's in the book. Check it out. F-S-B-O-Z-I-L-L-A.com. Elaine, grab your free copy of the book. You don't have to fill out a form. You don't have to pay shipping. It's a download. You can read. Actually, it's a flip book. You can read it online or we can send you a PDF copy of it, but it's all in there. Man, I'm having fun with this. Hey, Jen, throw me another question. Oh, sorry, Elaine. Thank you for that question. Uh, Jen, throw me another one. Letty sent us this one. My cousin wants to buy a house, but he's not all the way through the immigration process yet. He only has an ITIN number. Are there any options for him? Will hey. me co-signing help? Hey, Letty, that's a great question. There are options. There are a variety of programs. Does he have a visa? What is the visa classification? What's his visa status? That makes a big, big difference. But just having the ITIN, and guys, for anybody out there who's scratching their head, that's individual taxpayer identification number. That's what somebody going through the process gets prior to obtaining a social security number. It's so that they can earn money and pay taxes in 
the U.S. So I would just need to know what his immigration status and visa class is to determine which programs would qualify. But yes, there are a host of programs that are available and some may benefit from you being a cosigner. Some may not require it at all, but I would need a lot more information to give you a concise answer. And I welcome the conversation. So just reach out when we're not on the air and uh, walk me through a few of the details and I can point you in the right direction. All right, Jen, what do you have? Teddy is asking, what do we need to be aware of if we are trying to sell our house without a real estate agent? We need to make as much as possible when we sell to make our move to Georgia. Hey, where were all you do-it-yourselfers when I was trying to fix that darn car during COVID? I was so alone over there working on that thing. Hey, Teddy, it's, again, I hate to just keep throwing it up there. It's in the book, fsbozilla.com. Get your copy of the book. But to answer your question, it's really around the financing. I would want to make sure that they are fully approved, not pre-qualified. I'd want to see the approval. And if it was me, I would call the bank or the mortgage company and have that conversation. You know, you heard me mention it earlier in the show, that detailed interaction between the seller or the selling party and the lender to confirm the quality of that approval. I'm mean, that would be where I would start. And if you get the documentation and you want somebody to look at it for you, no obligation. I don't care if we're the mortgage company or not. I'm happy to review it and just let you know, yes, this is a bona fide approval and not a pre-qualification because a pre-qualification is meaningless guys. A pre-qualification often is just verbal and it'll say right on there. None of this information will has been verified. And it's as simple as somebody calling and saying, Hey, I make 125,000 a year. I have 85,000 in the bank and my credit score is a 763. Am I qualified? And the lender says, yeah, you're pre-qualified. Here's a pre-qualification letter. That's as far as they've gone. And you don't want to sign a contract, take your house off the market, let strangers troop in and out of the house with just that level of documentation, because it's truly truly meaningless in the grand scheme of things. So guys, that's why we did this. That's why we created this program because people are starting the process. Like I did, I talked about it in the opening. I thought I could figure this out. And thankfully I was working on a car that wasn't moving, that didn't have to pack its stuff, that didn't have to go buy another car. It was just a car in my garage that didn't run and I was trying to figure out how to fix it. And until somebody gave me the guidance, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And as soon as I had the guidance, I was able to do it. And I saved myself a ton of money because as I mentioned, my only option on that 60 year old car that I've been restoring was to ship it out, have it fixed and ship it back. That was more money than the cost of the car. It made zero sense to me. So I cobbled on it and tried to fix it. And the answer was super simple, not easy. It was a pain in the butt. It was three Modellos, a busted knuckle and some cursing, but I got it fixed because I followed the instructions that somebody gave me. So guys, that's why we did this because of that experience being played out over and over again in the world of real estate. So I appreciate that question. Thanks for that. Go ahead, Jen. Let's squeeze in one more. Donna sent us an email. What is the minimum credit score for the REC refinance? I have a lot of equity, but I'm falling behind on some of my bills. Hey, Donna. Okay. This is a great, great question. Now, are you already behind and your credit's been damaged? That would be my first question. Because guys, if you feel the pinch coming, divorce that 3% interest rate and preserve your credit and pay your bills off. Because if you wait too long, you may not qualify. But to Donna's question, you know, you want to be somewhere around a 620 or higher credit score because lower than that, you're going to be scrutinized on how much cash you can take out. The good news is with debt consolidation, we can take the debt out of your debt to income ratio before you close, which helps a lot of people qualify. So um, let's have that conversation off the air if you want to go deep. But uh, if you're a 620 or higher, you might have a fighting chance at it. But guys, you hear the music, you know what that means? Man, oh man, I have rambled my way through another 
episode of the Mr. Mortgage Show. Gosh, time flies. Hey, guys, if you need us when we're not on the air, MrMortgageRadio.com is the easiest way to find us, MrMortgageRadio.com. Otherwise, we are out of here. Jen is waving me out of the studio. Guys, have an amazing week. We'll be back next week right here, same time, same station. Until then, MrMortgageRadio.com is how you find us. Be good. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and I'm going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you know any friends, family, coworkers, or the guy in front of you at the grocery line who's talking or thinking about buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to help me spread the word, introduce them to me, to the team. You can do that by simply sharing MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Guys, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Now, back to the commercials. So you think interest rates have gotten too high to refi? Well, not so fast. There are several reasons people refinance. Sure, lowering your interest rate is one, but there's debt consolidation, home improvement, unexpected medical expenses, pulling out some equity to go buy an investment property. Heck, I even know of one guy who refinanced his house so he could buy his mistress a condo. But let's jump back to debt consolidation for a minute. I'm working with a client right now. His name is Ben. He's gonna refinance his house, pay off a host of credit cards and two truck payments. And yes, his mortgage interest rate is going to go up, but his monthly expenses are going to go down significantly. And that monthly savings is going to get he and his family back on track. Guys, if you've got questions, check us out at MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. My name is Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. I host the Mr. Mortgage Show, and we are always here and happy to help. Check us out at MrMortgageRadio.com.